Now this is the original striker that came with this particular singing bowl. Now one thing that is interesting about the way I have this singing bowl situated on my hand is that in fact I have two singing bowls here so there's a subtle difference between when you have one singing bowl inside and you have no singing bowl inside this one Striker, you can create a larger resonance, even above lawn equipment in the background. So, when you look at a striker like that on a smaller bowl, it doesn't quite work, right? Unless you're very, very careful, right? So, that's one of the reasons why I went with this striker. This one's a little more universal. It works on small bowls pretty well. I have to dip down just a little bit. But the wood striker in this case without any covering works best. And you not only rotate as a means of meditation, although that is valid, but you also let the resonant sound permeate your senses and continue on. If you listen carefully and closely, it continues to resonate for about a minute longer. And so, these frequencies that can be generated through these, they definitely connect us with something deeper. And aside from resonant tools that work along the basis of what you might call sound and reverberation, there are other tools. Now, these are called bouting balls. They're actually called by different names. You might call them Chinese medicine balls, any number of things. These are made out of copper, but um, you have others that are more commonly made out of uh, chrome or uh, hollowed out steel. And they allow you to rotate these balls across your hands. And one of the objectives is to rotate these without them touching. And so you can sit and stand. I oftentimes like to walk around and rotate these because they help with balance. They help with understanding proportion and order. And so they're a great thing to have with you. And you can learn to use them in either hand though 
I'm less accomplished in this hand than I am in the other, but with enough practice, I've gotten pretty good at it. And so these meditation tools, they are part of our overall experience. They are part of taking our experience of life and bringing dimensions of focus and understanding into our daily experience. And so one of the pieces of information that I encountered um, in 2018, I met a gentleman who said he was the brother of Wayne Chandler. And Wayne Chandler is well known in many uh, spiritual circles. Um, currently, he's well known in the art of uh, Qigong. And so, over the years, I have looked at various uh, practices when it comes to whole body health and um, making sure that your, your mind and your body is a good alignment. And one of the things that I was looking at um, was Tai Chi. And so um, one of the Tai Chi series I like is Christopher Pays. Uh, it's by Body Wisdom Publishers. Um, Christopher Pays introductory course to Tai Chi and Qigong. And um, I definitely like the 10, 11 minute warm up exercises that Christopher Pay uh, uh, has published out on YouTube, but I have the DVD set of his series and um, I found it very useful for helping with coordination, but also with building your core, right? Um, at the base of your spine, uh, you could derive a lot of strength in terms of physical strength by developing the base of your spine and making sure that that is properly aligned. But Wayne Chandler's brother was a gentleman who would um, challenge my views on a variety of things. And one day he gave me the book that Wayne Chandler is most famous for writing. Uh, the, the book is called Ancient Future ancient future and so I read ancient future in 2018 granted my spiritual growth and exploration really began around 2006 2006 and so um, but I had become comfortable in the last couple of years with what I knew and what I had accepted but I have to say that out of all the books that I've ever read on spirituality, Ancient Future was and is the best one. And in all things, I venerate the Most High, the true Most High, the source of sources, the source of experience, essence, and being. That which brought into existence and into our common understanding the experience of experience, the essence of all things and their foundations, the true source behind the elemental powers, the rhythm and coordinating source that gives life to our ancestors and to all benevolent powers that are in alignment with the Most High and all of our ancestors who are in alignment with the Most High. I say thank you on this day for giving us a mind to see and a mind to pursue the deeper mysteries. And of those deeper mysteries that Wayne Chandler described in his book, he described seven principles that others have seen as the seven hermetic principles. And I'm not into her hermeticism. When I say things, I just mention the source of you know where some of these things are purported to come from but then the hermetic principles or hermeticism uh, itself is said to have derived from Egyptian mystery teaching right and Egyptian mystery teaching then is said to have come by way of Toth right 
And if you really want to understand that sort of thing, you really want to uh, talk to Billy Carson. He has uh, a great channel called uh, Forbidden TV. Uh, Billy Carson is a great speaker and he really expounds on these things. But Wayne Chandler does a great job documenting these principles in his book, Ancient Future. And in my understanding and in my opinion, in my sense of things, Wayne Chandler ties together many different schools of philosophy, schools of thought, and spiritual questions that you may not even know you had. And these seven principles, you know, I'm looking at them here, you know, the first being mentalism, where there's a mind that pervades all things. Some might relate it to intelligent design, but you would probably say that it goes further than that. You have the principle of correspondence, or what people would commonly say, as above, as below. How what you see in an atom can be reflected in the macroscopic universe, or what you see in the larger systems of existence, you can see in the microbiome within the body, right? So that's correspondence, how you have relationships where you can study relationships at one level to understand relationships at another level. The principle of polarity, how you have energies that can attract as well as repel. And understanding how that principle of polarity is useful in the sciences and how that principle of polarity has some involvement in creation. You know, that takes you to the fifth principle, the principle of gender, which is not really male or female, right? We're not talking about male or female, but we're talking about masculine principle, right? Where you have masculinity, right? And you have femininity and how they too have to work together to create life. And anything that you're looking to create, you have to have balance. And that balance is one where you can say you can take extremes and you try to bring them together in the right mix to fuse and bring about innovation, bring about something new through synthesis. And then you have the principle of rhythm, right? Where there is that observed pattern of energy, where you see that in oscillations, you see that in movements, right? And so rhythm, and according in an ancient future, you know, Wayne Chandler does a great job of talking about how when the moon is in um, a certain orbit or a certain uh, position, how that affects the seas, affects the waters. And of course, our body is made up of water. You're going to see that same impact, right? And so rhythm is um, a principle that you will find in many things. And then the seventh principle, the principle of cause and effect how you may see something at one point, but realize that it came about because of something that preceded it, right? And so cause and effect is something that must be understood. And our most common word for that is consequences, right? There are consequences to everything. And understanding cause and effect helps us to better understand consequences. And so these seven principles are a great starting point. They're not the end-all be-all. There are more principles beyond this. Uh, one of the real ones I've learned about recently is the principle of care, C-A-R-E. How there are things you want to do in your life and there are visions that you have that they don't come about if you don't care. And you can have the smartest mind in the world, you can have intellect, you can have training, you can have resources, you can have money, you can have whatever. But if you don't care enough, then 
greatness will not happen. And so these principles that Wayne Chandler talks about, and he talks about more than that, because if he just talked about principles, you could just read the, the, the Kybalian. You could just read the Kybalian. But he talks about the cycles of existence. He talks about how the galaxies are moving on a certain uh, time scale. And it's amazing how those time scales affect the different epochs of humanity, the different ages of of humanity, the golden age, the dark age, and the ages in between, and the different um, stories, narratives, mythologies that help us understand the broader context in which spirituality has unfolded and become a part of our living experience. And so when we walk that path of spirituality and we use the tools of meditation, Ah, it's a yellow jacket. Meditation. Mudras. Right? So, you use these tools together to affect greater change in the things that you do. And you'll find that when we talk about computer systems, we talk about manifestation through systems, right? And we talk about biological systems, chemical systems, and chemistry, right? Then there are thoughts, thought processes, concepts that we can bring into that process that has been brought into that process unaware of those who enjoy the end result where we can create greatness and create a greater result for ourselves. Thank you.